are you going to U-turn on big measures, further big measures in your mini budget, as many seem to be speculating on right now? Our position hasn't changed. I will come up uh, with the uh, medium-term fiscal plan on the 31st of October, as I uh, said earlier in the week, uh, and there'll be more detail there. Is there a possibility that the corporation tax change, so keeping it at 19p, won't happen? The corporation tax will be raised so, on the cards. So what I'm totally focused on is on delivering uh, on the mini-budget, making sure that we get growth back into our economy. And the fact that we're here, the fact that I'm in Washington, uh, shows the nature of the challenge. There are hundreds, uh, literally hundreds, of uh, officials, finance ministers, central bank governors, and they're all tackling the same questions. They're all looking to see what we can do as a global community to deal with inflation, uh, what we can do uh, to deal with uh, rising interest rates across uh, the globe, and particularly uh, very, people are very focused on energy prices uh, and the response uh, that we gave in the mini budget to the uh, energy price guarantee, giving the energy price guarantee, is, is, is really widely appreciated. Markets are already responding to the idea there's going to be a U-turn on corporation tax. Is that not a possibility? Can you clarify that? Is it even a possibility that you're going to U-turn on the corporation tax? My total focus, Faisal, is on delivering on the mini budget in, and in making full, sure and making sure that we get growth back into our economy. That's the central prize. That's the main focus uh, of my job. And the reason why I'm here in Washington, the reason you're here, is because we've got IMF annuals and everybody is talking about the same problems. Everybody's talking about energy, everybody's talking about uh, inflation, and everybody is talking about how we can get growth back into the global economy. But Chancellor, you have a situation where, as you say, you've come here to discuss important issues. Back home, at number 10, there are discussions filleting the fiscal statement that you made just a few weeks ago. That so, must be humiliating. No, I speak to uh, number 10, I speak to the Prime Minister all the time, uh, and we are totally focused on delivering the growth plan. I mean, what we were facing was a tax high of 70 years and no growth. And what actually IMF uh, officials, people I speak to just yesterday, uh, Kristalina Georgieva said to me that growth is a central uh, focus of the international community. You were quite right uh, to focus on growth and people are talking about some of the ideas uh, that we've we put forward. If you had to U-turn on a major part of your mini budget, would you have to consider your position as Chancellor? I'm totally focused on the growth agenda, Faisal. I'm totally focused on making sure that people are helped with their energy bills, that the energy uh, price guarantee is understood, that the scale of our intervention, uh, credible intervention of the British state is understood, and that we can actually deliver this country uh, a path get us on a trajectory to growing the economy so that everyone benefits. And actually, what's fascinating to me here is that this is a these are global challenges. Uh, people from the IMF, the World Bank, the G7, all of these officials and ministers are tackling the same problems. But can you acknowledge what's the consensus in the market, the Bank of England have said it too, which is that there are specific factors at work in the UK following your mini budget? What I am uh, going to uh, acknowledge is the fact that it is a very uh, a dicey situation globally. That's what people are saying to me. The people are saying that we, do, we understand... I, look, there was some turbulence. I, I, I'm frank enough to accept that okay. after the minute. But, but where I'm sitting here talking about the global challenges, everybody uh, is focused on inflation. Everybody is affected by uh, potential interest rate rises. Everybody is affected by the energy uh, price spikes, which have been exacerbated by Putin's illegal war in Ukraine. So everybody across the global financial community is really f focusing on the same problems. And you'll be Chancellor and Liz Truss will be Prime Minister this time next month? Absolutely, 100%. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you very much, Chancellor. Thank you. Oh, well, let's speak to our deputy political editor, Sam Coates, who was listening to that interview from Westminster. Um, and Sam, the Chancellor says he's not going anywhere, wouldn't be drawn on U-turns, uh, basically said he's concentrating on delivering this mini-budget and the growth agenda. That sounds a lot different to what you've been hearing in Westminster today. That's right, Sarah Jane. Look, this is a fast um, and, and sort of unfolding political situation, so we're having to sort of re read the ruins quite, quite carefully. 
Um, it's important to note, we actually started a little bit way into that interview with Kwasi Kwarteng uh, done out in Washington. The journalist who did it has actually tweeted the beginning. The first question was, is there going to be a U-turn? Uh, and the journalist involved says that Kwasi Kwarteng told him, our position hasn't changed. I will come up with a medium-term fiscal plan on the 31st of October. As I said earlier in the week, there'll be more detail on that. And then uh, the Chancellor went on to uh, answer the questions that you, you, you just saw. So it sounds like just before the bit that you saw, the Chancellor played down, if not quite ruling out, played down quite strongly the idea that there's a U-turn on the card. Uh, but when we faced um, additional, when he, when he was challenged with additional questions, he sort of sidestepped them. Uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't come down definitively that there won't be any changes at all. He's trying to hold the line uh, that there are going to be no changes on October the 31st. But, 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 but it was an uncomfortable interview. And you, you, you could feel that tension. He doesn't want to talk about the large array of domestic problems. He was there trying to refocus the interview several times on what was going on uh, overseas. He conceded only a little bit of domestic turbulence, um, suggesting that the real pain was global. There is some truth in that, but there is, mu there is also a lot of truth in the fact that some of the uh, problems that this government are facing uh, with both in the markets and politically are, are completely self-inflicted from the mini-budget that he saw uh, three weeks ago. What it seems like to me, Sarah Jane, is that there are some in Downing Street actively looking at undoing some of the measures in the mini-budget. But what it also looks like, from everything you could tell from that interview out in Washington, is that Kwasi Kwarteng ain't happy about that. He's playing it down, he's sort of re rejecting it, but not perhaps doing so definitively. As the questioner said, you know, the markets have already reacted positively to the idea that there might be some kind of, of, of U-turn. I, I think that looks like, we can say, tensions between the Chancellor and the Prime Minister, but there's a lot more of this that I think is going to unfold in the coming idea, in the coming hours. At Sky News we've, re News, we've been reporting for a couple of hours, there are discussions in government about which bits of the mini-budget that you could, might undo, potentially the corporation tax uh, uh, might be allowed to rise again, something that Liz Truss's Chancellor put a stop to in that mini-budget three weeks ago. Uh, Kwasi Kwarteng defending the principle of low taxation, uh, but not really getting into a defence of the measures beyond the energy uh, tax hike. So, anonymous sources in Westminster saying one thing, the Chancellor looking uncomfortable and rejecting some of the broad themes in Washington. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. That uh, part of the interview, that first part of the interview you were referring to, we now have that, so we're going to bring that to people. Stay with us, Sam. Here's that interview. Joining us. Thank you. Are you going to U-turn on big measures, further big measures in your mini budgets, as many seem to be speculating on right now? Our position hasn't changed. I will come up uh, with the uh, medium-term fiscal plan on the 31st of October, as I uh, said earlier in the week, uh, and there'll be more detail there. Is there a possibility that the corporation tax change, so keeping it at 19p, won't happen? That corporation tax will be raised? Is so, that on the cards? So what I'm totally focused on is on delivering uh, on the mini-budget, making sure that we get growth back into our economy. And the fact that we're here, the fact that I'm in Washington, uh, shows the nature of the challenge. There are hundreds, uh, literally hundreds, of uh, officials, finance ministers, central bank governors, and they're all tackling the same questions. They're all looking to see what we can do as a global community to deal with inflation, uh, what we can do uh, to deal with uh, rising interest rates across uh, the globe, and particularly uh, very, people are very focused on energy prices uh, and the response uh, that we gave in the mini-budget to the uh, energy price guarantee, giving the energy price guarantee, is, is, is really widely appreciated. Markets are already... Um, Sam, that was the first part of that interview. And Kwasi Kwarteng had just come from um, a briefing from the IMF where um, the Director General had said fiscal policy should not undermine monetary policy. She was talking about the global context, but honing in on the UK there quite specifically, because what the IMF have been doing this week is saying, look, you know, there are global headwinds, there could be a global recession next year, but looking at the UK, this is not how to deal with it. So when you talk about Kwasi Kwarteng being uncomfortable in that interview there, he just come from that straight into some uncomfortable questions. That's right. And I'm just looking down because I'm just reaching back to what the IMF managing director uh, actually said. Uh, and it amounts to a rebuke. She said, you don't prolong the pain if the evidence is that you need a recalibration is right. For, um, it, if the evidence is that, the, uh, that you need a recalibration, it's right for the government to do, to do so. 
So he'd just come from a meeting with the IMF director who said, if you need to U-turn, British government, please do so. So yeah, uh, uh, uncomfortable out there. But I, I, I think it's important to go back to what we just saw, because there are some, uh, including the person who did the interview, who are interpreting Kwasi Kwarteng's language as a definitive rejection of the idea that there'd be any U-turn. I, I, I have to say, I, I thought it was less definitive than that. Kwasi Kwarteng was asked, is there going to be a U-turn? And he said, my position hasn't changed. I'll have a statement on October the 31st. Then asked specifically whether there'd be a U-turn on corporation tax. Uh, he said, I'm focused on growth. That, that feels like the situation is very fluid. That's not a categorical denial that anything's going to happen. I think lots of things are in play. I think Kwasi Kwarteng looks uncomfortable. I think people inside Downing Street are perhaps trying to make decisions mm. on his behalf. We don't know how this is going to end. We don't know how the personality politics and the uh, and the political tensions are going to play out. So we're, we're just going to have to wait and see, yeah. Sarah Jane. Sam, actually, that's it, personality politics. When he said my position hasn't changed, do you think there we're seeing a bit of a split between what the Chancellor thinks and perhaps what the Prime Minister is now thinking? And that's quite dangerous, isn't it, a split, especially this early on between the PM and her Chancellor? Well... Let, let, let's, let's focus in on what we know. We know that there are advisers to the Prime Minister, according to this morning's Times, who are saying, do a massive U-turn. And we also know that there have been points of tension in the relationship between Liz Truss uh, and Kwasi Kwarteng. So go back a, two weeks, I think it is, there was uh, Liz Truss resisting attempts by Kwasi Kwarteng to respond to a Bank of England statement about, uh, uh, about problems in the market. Eventually, he got her to do that, but that, that was a moment of tension, I think. Uh, there was the kerfuffle over who should be the lead civil servant in the Treasury. In the end, uh, Liz Truss overruled Kwasi Kwarteng over who that should be uh, to install her own candidate, somebody, uh, James Bowler, who she's personally close to. And I think there are all sorts of other more techie things that they have not been necessarily on the same page on. And then you come to that U-turn that's already happened about the top rate of tax, the £150,000, people earning over £150,000, um, scrapping the additional rate that's now been reinstated. Liz Truss went on the telly and said that was the Chancellor's decision. So I think, I think we're seeing a pattern of you know, you can call it tension, you can call it disagreement. It's, it, it's not terribly settling for the markets to have the Chancellor pulling in one direction and the Prime Minister seeming to be uh, in a slightly different place. And, 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 and to be honest, and we're having to read a little bit behind the between the lines, we have to sort of work out from a bit of the nuances because stuff isn't announced yet. It, it feels like that's exactly the territory that we're in again after that not particularly relaxed encounter in Washington. Yeah, well, we'll see who wins that tug of war between the Chancellor and the Prime Minister, potentially uh, before the 31st of October. Sam, thank you, Sam Coates there, our Deputy Political Editor.